Five times five is? 25. Yeah. Hey folks, welcome, welcome, welcome out there. It is, wow, it is a specialized segment today. You know that. I'm Ernie Roberts. I'm your host for MathLine today. And it is specialized segments. Now, what do we do on specialized segments? Well, first of all, we don't have any call-ins, although you're still welcome to send us problems throughout this duration on our Facebook, through email, all those great resources there. And we'll be glad to get back to them sometime between now and, you know, our next show, right? So, but we are glad to have you with us tuned in today. We are going to do some more test prep work today, so get those pencils, get those papers, maybe a calculator, and I'll tell you something on this one, maybe a little bit of graph paper on the side would be good to have, although you can do makeshift uh, without it probably. But uh, let's see what we're going to do today since we've got to kind of ramble a little bit on there. More linear coordinate practice. All right, so we're going to get some more of that coordinate going on. We got coordinated in another episode, and now we're going to work a little bit more with that. We're going to hit distance formula day and hopefully do some uh, hardcore review, a quick hardcore review of, oh goodness, what, slope, midpoint, and of course the distance. Let's look at it here and let's get rolling here. All right, we've got to find the distance between the points. It says negative 4, 6 and five, negative six. Now, some of you kind of go like, okay, what are we gonna do with this? Well, first of all, I think a picture's worth a thousand words. So, if y'all take it away just a second, let me get some graph paper on this thing and we will, we will regroup and go with it. Because I think graphing on it, you see so much of what's going on, then we're gonna establish the distance formula and work it out from that standpoint. Pretty straightforward, right? Exactly. So, the points I gave you, let's just put them down here, were negative four, and six, that was our xy combination. And at the same time, we had five and then negative six. And what we're gonna to try to do is find out how long is the line segment that connects those. That's the whole idea. Remember, we can't, we can't find length of a line, but we certainly can find length of the line segment that is connecting our two points there. And we'll see what happens from there, all right? Uh, so points said negative four and six. So we're gonna to go to the left four, I believe that's right, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to go up to four, six, and there's our first coordinate right there. That is our negative four and six. Remember, x, we'll just go ahead and put it in there. First x, first y, there we are. And while we're at it underneath here, second x, second y. Well, it's immaterial. It just happens to be that's the first point, that's the second point. So don't get excited about those little ones and twos. By the way, they do not mean to square. They are subscripts. So they're basically the first x, first y, second x, second y right there. Now, let's see the other point while we're at it. Let's go over five to the right. There we go. And we're going to go down six. So this is a pretty healthy little segment. All right, pretty good, healthy little line segment. I hope it will connect. Yeah, it's going to make it. Very good, so we're gonna draw right through there. We're gonna to try to, and it is, it is a line segment. So we're gonna figure out what is the length of this little critter, all right? Now it looks pretty long, doesn't it? Everybody says, yeah, it's kinda of long, it's pretty nice. So let's see how we're gonna go about doing this. First of all, there is a formula, but I don't wanna really go there yet. I want us to create a right triangle situation here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at how the vertical runs, or the vertical drops here, it looks like. Let's see, we're gonna go Quite a long distance here, no pun intended, or actually pun intended. Uh, got a little carried away, but that's all right, we'll cut it off down here. And let's see, right here we go. And I want you to notice we got a nice right triangle happening for us here. Everybody agrees? Nod your head out there. Uh-huh, we do, we do. And now it is time, we're gonna, we can count blocks. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you've got these points on a graph, this is the easiest way to do it. Just count the blocks, count the blocks, and use our friend, the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Now, I want us to notice something here. This is a nice little business called the rise, all right, as we work our way up to here and up to here. Now, some of you say, well, I, I remember that with the slope formula, Ernie. Yes, you do. And it's kind of the same story here on the, the distance formula. We're also going to be worrying about what's going on down here. And you know what? That happens to be the run, my friends. That's a run, and the reason I put that in there is because I think it's easier sometimes to remember rise and run because we have, we've got slope down our head. It's rise over run all the time, but what we're going to do here, we're going to say rise squared plus run squared equals, you know what we're looking for? This little guy right there, D, and it's going to equal D squared. So what we got to do? Count blocks. That's pretty easy, isn't it? 
Usually it is. I hope it is for me today. I think we got a six here and six here, so that's going to give us a 12 out here. And we're not going to worry about that we're going down negatively or positively. You know what happens when we square it? It's going to go positive, right? And going across here, it looks like we're running about nine blocks. Well, you want to make sure four and five. Yes, it is. So our run in this case is going to be nine. And now, folks, what we're going to do, we're going to take run squared plus the rise squared. And that's going to give us that lovely d squared moment. And we're going to figure out what d is very easily. Now, pop them in here. I, I, we already know this is what? Run is 9, right? So there we go, 9 squared. The rise we picked is 12. So it's 12 squared equaling to our d squared. How about that? And everybody knows those perfect squares? Okay, let's add them. We'll square them first and then add them, all right? So we got 81. And by the way, it's very, very important what we do first. We got to square it, then we'll do the addition. Um, 144. Oh, here we got old d squared. Now we can pop this together. They're going to give us 225. And some of you are going like, I recognize that. I recognize, Ernie, it's a perfect square. Some of you say, I didn't recognize that, Ernie. It's a perfect square? Well, uh, let's check and see. All right, you can go quickly to your calculator for a, 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 a check out here. Let's go second and hit the square root button. And type in your lovely 225. And... My goodness, it is a perfect square, isn't it, folks? And that's our deal is we will take the square root at the very last minute. Don't square root too soon. It's the very last thing you do. And D, in this case, is going to be 15 units, whether that be miles, inches, whatever we're using for our units here, all right? So there's a look at it from the graphical standpoint. Now, can we take it away just a second, guys? Thank you. And I want to go back to what if we didn't have a graph? Well, if we didn't have any graph paper, we can always make, make makeshift stuff, but you know, it's a lot easier to count the blocks when they're all there, isn't it? So let's go back to a thing called the distance formula. And I want to go back to the thing that we had. We said run squared plus rise squared equals the d squared. Going back to that point, all right, the distance, of course, between those points. And remember, we called this one, what was it? Am I on a different one? I think I picked up the, did I move the wrong one? Ah, we'll go to a new one, okay? <laughs> we'll just go on this one anyhow. Um, I thought we were doing the same problem. We'll bring it back here in just a second. How about that? Never know what's going to happen on math line, do you? Got it. So let's go ahead and look at this. This is going to be what we're going to do. I said we're going to use the formula, so we're going to do that. And we're going to do a different, little different problem here. Hopefully, it'll still come out with a nice answer. And some of you are going like, gosh, we got two for the price of one. Absolutely, absolutely. So here's our x1, x1, y1, x2, y2. And remember, how do we find run? We subtract the x coordinates. So I'm going to just use x1 minus x2. That was how we established those. And here we go. I'm going to use y1 minus y2. We'll put a squared on that. And we still got this d that we're really trying to figure out what's going on over there. All right, with d squared. So again, what we're going to do, we're going to now that we have written the formula. Oh, by the way, does everybody see where that came from? Again, run is just simply the difference, the change in x. Rise, the change in y. And, and I'll answer the question. I know some of you have in your mind there. Yes, we could have put x2 minus x1, and we could have y2 minus y1. What's going to happen is we're going to come out with a positive value no matter what when we square. Everybody good on that? Follow me, because if we square a negative, we get a positive. If we square a positive, we get a positive. The world goes, yeah, exactly. Let's do it. So let's put some numbers in here. How about it? I'm just going to go ahead and do what I said. Negative 3 minus 3, and we'll square that little puppy. And then we're going to put in our y's together, right? This looks like a 6 minus a negative 2. We'll square that out. And that gives us our d squared. Remember, we're looking for d. So I can't put a number in there, although I can in my mind be guessing maybe where it's going to go. It's not there yet, right? So let's go back and think a minute. These are going to go positive, right? Plus a, plus a positive right there with 6 plus 2. Uh, over here, I've got a negative 3 and a negative 6. Well, that's what's going to give me, right? Negative 6, negative 3, negative 3 is going to give me a negative 6. 
I jump ahead of myself occasionally. Haven't y'all figured that out by now? And I have 8 squared equaling, how yeah, about it, d squared. These look nice because I like 36. I like 64. We all know those, right? Everybody does that. That's, remember, that's 6 times 6 and 8 times 8. Add them together, we get a 100, which I really like. Put that squared up there, Ernie Roberts. And you know what? We got 100 equaling to d squared. Everybody with me so far? Now, let's go back and step just a second here. What did we do? We wrote the formula. That's the first thing. And the formula is not that hard if you think about run and rise. I really believe it's not a difficult formula to remember. And we started plugging and plugging and plugging and plugging and plugging and plugging. But you know what? One thing we have to do in order to get to D, what do we have to do at the very end? We have to square root. So let's go back and review our steps. We used the formula. We did a substitution. Did substitution there. We did our subtraction. Although in some cases it became like addition. All right, but we did our subtract step. Then we squared, we added to the addition, and last but not least, we're going to square root. And that just equals D, doesn't it? We don't even have to worry about that. And we're done. There it happens. There it happens. So, that's our story. By the way, last step is finally square root. Now, I want to make sure also our viewers, everyone who's watching this, there is a difference between squaring and square root. Square means we say like 6 times 6, 8 times 8. Here we're looking for the number of times itself that will go from 100 back to 10. There is a difference, and I know a lot of time our students kind of get that a little bit confused in there, all right? And by the way, those of you who don't believe me, let's go back to that calculator real quick and check. Do we get the square root of 100? Of course we do. Everybody knows that one, right? So we'll go second. We'll hit square root, and let's put a 100 in there. And, by golly, it's 10, isn't it? So there again, just always, I know you all always kind of like to make sure I'm right. I try to make sure I'm right on these, and sometimes I get carried away and get excited. That's why we have the little ways to check and stuff there. So let's put this one on a graph and see if it matches up. Let's see if I can organize this time a little better than I did the last time. I got a little funny. Sorry about that, guys. But uh, we'll get there. Test review time. Yes. Okay. Let's put them real quickly here. Negative 3 and 6 are my points, my coordinates. Because I want you to realize the Pythagorean theorem is still holding here. And we've got 3 and down 2. I'll play the connect the dots one if I can find. Here you went. Let's bring that right triangle back into play. And we're going to see this is going to be basically the same Pythagorean relationship. But I just want you to realize if you've got a graph, it's sweet to do the blocks. I really agree. I think that's great because that's really what this is. It's an application of the Pythagorean theorem. But if you've got no graph, you'd still have the formula if you'll just remember the little right triangle relationship. And you can drop it down there. And once again, look at there. We've got six blocks going this way. We have what? It's a right triangle. We have eight going this way. That's going to give you the 10. So 6 squared plus 8 squared does give us 10 squared, as we notice. So the distance formula, absolutely, it's Pythagorean. Absolutely, Pythagorean. So again, whichever way works best for you, my friends, go for it. Sometimes it's easy to remember formula. Sometimes they'll give you the distance formula, okay? But if you can plot it quick on a graph and count blocks or count blocks in your head, whatever you want to do, that will make things go probably even faster. So that's your story on the distance formula pretty much there. And again, if you can go back and do the gridding and the graphing and all those good things, it's not so bad. It really isn't. Now, here comes a real interesting type question here. You might want to look at an interesting question. I want to look at an interesting question. And I am going to go back to our lovely formula. Now, what's different this time? It says, Ernie, 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 what didn't you do? Ooh, you gave us the distance, but not one of the coordinates. And I called it A, just because it's kind of like A squared plus B squared. We're going to look at it in that way. All right. I, I have looked at this problem in a lot of different ways, and I think if we can understand what I just said a minute ago, the rise squared plus the run squared equals the distance squared. Let's go back to that, all right? And it could be run squared plus rise squared. It's, it's, it, it works either way, all right? But let's see what's happening here. First of all, I have everything I need, don't I? 
except an A. I know, except an A. We've got to find the A, right? So here we go. Let's go ahead and work the rise. Remember, the rises are your Ys. Okay, there's your Y1, Y2. There's your X1, X2. So run those Ys together. Those aren't big numbers. You can probably do those mentally, but let's go ahead and write them out just for, just for the fact I like to do that. It's going to be, we're going to go 7 minus, four, minus 3. We're going to get a 4. And I'm just jumping the gun again. Plus on our run. Now, we're going to go with 4 minus A. You can say A minus 4. It's, it's, it's going to work. And equals, oh, we got a number. 5 squared, which is 25. Well, thank goodness, we only have one variable to figure out, right? Let's go ahead and figure this one out. This is 4 squared. You know, some of you said, that's 16, Ernie. But we'll do that in just a second. And we've still got this little thing here. I really wish I'd written A minus 4, but it's all right. We'll, we'll still get out of this thing. All right, equals 25. Are we good? Now, remember, my friends, 4 squared is equal to 16. It's true. 4 squared equals 16. Absolutely. And some of you are just itching to foil. I know. Everybody wants to foil. Well, let's not do that right now. <laughs> you say, what? We thought we were going to go through this. Let's just leave this thing as it is. I've got a little trick on it. All right? And another reason why I wish we'd put A minus 4. If we foil it, it's going to be the same thing as if I put A minus 4 squared. By the way, everybody wants to know that. It's going to be the same trinomial result. Honest, wouldn't lie to you. Uh, keep our 25 there. We're doing good. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to leave this 16. We're going to send it right over to the right. And that's going to leave us with 4 minus a squared equaling 9. I like that. You say, well, wait, Ernie, what did you just do? We subtracted 16 from both sides. All right. We got the 9. Now, why do I like that? Because this thing is a perfect square. And we're going to square root both sides. You say, whoa. Yeah, whoa, why not? So that's going to leave me with 4 minus a on the left equaling this little guy plus or minus 3 on the right. Now we've got to keep the plus or minus 3 in there. Okay? We've got to take care of that. Now let's swing it right up here and let's see what's going to happen. So we're going to basically say 4 minus a has got to equal 3 or 4 minus a will equal Negative 3. All right? And you say, well, how about that? And how about that? I think it's great. So, looking, 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 where are we going to go? This one's pretty easy, isn't it? I think it is. Subtract that 4. And you got an opposite of A equaling a negative 1. Let's let A equal 1. I think 1 is a good answer. Okay? We'll find out in just a second. Let's go over here and look at this little guy. Go ahead and subtract the 4. And it looks like we got, oh gosh, that opposite of A equals a negative 7. So A equals to 7. 1 and 7, perhaps it does. Hope it does. Let's see if it does. Uh, put in a 1 right there. You're going to get 4 minus 1, which is 3. 3 squared is 9. If you put 4 minus 7, you get negative 3. But what, ha what happens when you square negative 3? You get 9. And it works back through, and it gives you... The distance. So you say, wait a minute, what have we got going on here? We have, what do we have? We've got two possibilities. Are they both good answers? So the coordinate could be 1, 3 or 7, 3. Either one of those is a good answer to make this give you a distance of 5. That's where you got to be careful. Now, you know, I said something. I almost slipped through and said something. And I ran out of room, so I can't really rework it. But I'm going to tell you what I was thinking about. If we were to foil that out, and you could. You could have foiled that out, but be sure. You do first outer, inner, last. Don't just write 16 and a squared. It will not fly. It will be bad news. Very bad news, all right? So what you got to do, you foil that thing out, and then you would set it equal to zero and factor. And I'm going to tell you something. You would get 1 and 7. You would still get 1 and 7 for your answers if you set it equal to zero and you factor. Just understand there's going to be a middle. It's going to, be, it's going to look something like this. I'll just go ahead and tell you. It would look something like a squared minus 8a plus 7 equals to zero when you set it equal to zero. This is for those of you, and I know there are a lot of you that do watch these shows, and you go like, what if? 
And if you were to take that and break it open, that would give you the 1 and the 7 combination when you set them equal to 0 and solve, all right? So two options. I personally think this one's ready to go, all right, the way we do like that. And a lot of times we forget, hey, we can apply this little square, this solving quadratics by using square roots to get where we're going, all right? So there you have it. A good little problem there to get us going and get us thinking. Now, you know what I think I want to do? I want to do a little review moment. How about it? So let's pick two points. I don't know where we want to put them. Ah, let's put them somewhere on this graph. Let's look at a graph here, okay? Got it there? Yay! Let's see. I have, my goodness, picking points is awfully difficult, isn't it? Let's put one right there. That's like, what, 2, negative 4? Oh, negative 2, negative 4. I like that. We'll go with that. And let's pick another one up here. Oh, maybe in quadrant one. How about it? Where we fly up here and we go, how about we go up four, four, four. And I've got all sorts of great stuff here. And you know what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, some of you are probably wondering, well, I don't know. We never know what's going to happen on this show, do we? We're going to connect right now as a segment. I want to find the midpoint. Uh, I want to find the slope. And what else? How about the distance? Oh, and do we dare? Do we dare? Can we do it? Sure we can. How about the y equals mx plus b? A good deal? We got it? So midpoint. Let's go back and think. Midpoint is the average We'll put these little formulas over here. Well, I got a little room right there. So midpoint. That's where we go what? Add the x's together. x1, x2, divide by 2. And the same thing with the y's. And we have two numbers for the coordinates. In other words, we're looking for an x and a y. Don't decide, oh, do we have to add those together? Oh, do we average them again? Oh, do we, what do we, do we subtract? I don't know. We're averaging and that's it. So we add them together, divide by two, bang. There you have it. So let's do it. Let's see what we got here. I'm averaging the X's first. Well, it looks like, did we do that right? We got those a little backwards, didn't we, my folks? My goodness, let's make that four, negative two. I don't think I can miss on four, four, all right? Some of you are going, Ernie, 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 what are you thinking? No, it is negative 4. And that's another mistake sometimes we do is forget to put the digits in the right places. Let's try this again. All right, negative 4 and 4 will give us 0. Divide by 2, that gives me 0. Um, now we've got a negative 2. And by the way, that is a negative 4 and a negative 2. Well, that's going to give us, it looks like, a 2 divided by 2, which is 1. That was easy, wasn't it? So in other words, we add them together, add them together, divide by 2, and we're done. And by the way, that's right there. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go a little further. The slope equals, you know it. Let's go back over here's formula. Slope is the rise over run. So that's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. All Everybody good on that? So let's count our blocks. That's all we really need to do here, really, don't we? So let's do that. We can just do a quick count the blocks. And we've got it. Looks like, this is positive, by the way, isn't it? Everybody agreeable on that? Because it's going in a positive direction. So I'm looking at, goodness, the, looks like 6 over 8. We're going up 6 over 8, which we're reduced to 3 fourths. So there's our 3 fourths right there. And your distance. This looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? If you were watching early in the show, we're going up 6. We're going over 8, 6 squared plus what? Uh-huh, 8 squared equals 10, right? Because remember our distance, is that kind of that square root moment, big square root moment? And we're going to take x1 minus x2, we'll square it, y1 minus y2, and square it. And there we have that. And my goodness, some of you are saying, Ernie, do you have enough room? I don't know. Let's see. What do we have left? We have three-fourths. Can we do it? 
Everybody with me? Area good? Go. Row, row, row. We got one minute. I have a slope. Ah, I have an intercept right there at 0, 1. Remember, that's where the midpoint was. 0, 1. So we'll put an x plus 1. And there you have it. By the way, 4, 4. Does it work there? Yep, it does. It's a good point. And how about it? The other one. And by the way, we could go ahead and extend that on out if you want and make a line. But there you go. We have all the great things, and that would be that y for all the way through there. And it also works for that, what is it, down there, that messy thing we had, what, negative 4, <laughs> which gives negative 3 plus 1, and 2, that gives us negative 2, and we are done on that one. It checks back very nicely. That was pretty quick and painless, wasn't it, once I got the points in the right place. Hey, thanks for tuning in today, and we will see you once again next time.